Final, the final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 15036 in the name of David Stewart on protecting frontline fire and rescue services. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I would invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And I call on Mr Stewart to open the debate. Mr Stewart, you have seven minutes, so thereby, please. Thank you very much, uh, President Officer. And could I first of all thank all the members that stayed behind this evening um, to support the debate and those that have signed my motion as well. Uh, you've got my thanks. Uh, for those members that have not signed my motion, I'm always a great believer in sinners that may repent in the future. So I'm looking forward to a few sinners in the chamber this evening uh, signing up at uh, six o'clock. So I, I expect, President Officer, that there's not one person in the chamber today who underestimates the uh, job that our firefighters do day after day responding to industrial uh, disasters, uh, terrorist attacks, uh, flood responses, chemical spills, keeping our communities safe, both in the event of a fire and, of course, by their preventative work, uh, which is vitally important as well, and their crucial role in attending road traffic accidents and much, much more besides. When the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service was created, the Scottish Government gave a clear and categoric assurance to Parliament that the introduction of the single service would not result in the loss of front-line jobs. Yet, on the 28th of April last year, uh, Chief Officer Alistair Hay advised the Justice Committee that the service, in an effort to live within its budget, had worked with the Fire Brigade Union to agree a resource-based crewing model, which would reduce the 3,890 whole-time firefighter posts to 3,709, reduction of 181 posts. The service had to reduce its cost base by 48.2 million in the first three years, a situation which was made much more difficult by not being VAT exempt, which I'll touch on again uh, in the future. President officer, the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service is the only fire and rescue service in the UK that pays VAT on goods and services, and the uh, Scottish Fire and Rescue Service pays around £10 million per annum on VAT, which is equivalent to 350 firefighter posts. In November last year, the Fire Brigade Union submitted a written statement to the Justice Committee noting its grave concerns that budget cuts will have a detrimental impact on 999 response times. And the Union states, and I quote, President Officer, that there has been a continual year-on-year -year reduction in the number of frontline firefighters since the decision to introduce a single fire and rescue service was taken in 2011 due to sustained periods of recruitment freezes." Unquote. It states that there is now over 400 fewer full-time firefighters than there was in 2010, and almost 300 fewer than there was when the National Service was induced, uh, introduced in 2013. But we were assured by Scottish ministers this would not happen. The FBU claimed that unrelented pressure to save money is impacting on frontline services and states that these reductions have inevitably affected the staffing levels and the ability to adequately crew all the frontline fire appliances all the time. I understand, presiding officer, that a decision was taken by the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service to remove up to four frontline uh, appliances each day, uh, in part from the West Service Delivery Area, which is formerly known as Strathclyde Fire and Rescue Service. And in January 2014, the decision was taken to reduce the number of fire control rooms in Scotland from eight to three, with the control rooms in Inverness, Aberdeen, Fife, Falkirk and Dumfries marked for closure, while Johnston, Edinburgh and Dundee remain open. Now, together with my colleague uh, Rhoda Grant, I fought hard against the closure of the Inverness control room, which services the Highlands and Islands. And I know many of my Labour colleagues, and indeed uh, MSPs from across the chamber, um, also fought, and I noticed Mary Scanlon was involved in that as well, also fought against the closures in their respective areas. This decision still provokes controversy, and indeed it has been argued by some that control room staff are frontline staff too, being the first point of contact for members of the public in an emergency situation. While we have been assured that technology is in place to safely allow these closures to take place, I would ask about the loss of local knowledge built up by frontline staff. In my own region of the Highlands and Islands, and the areas members will know the size of Belgium, 
Years of specialist geographic and logistical knowledge has been built up by staff. This knowledge will soon be lost to the service in the Highlands and Islands as the Inverness control room closes. The police control room at Bilston Glen, recently criticised in a watchdog report, was unable to take 999 calls for several hours last month due to technical difficulties in the early hours of the morning, which meant that 999 and 101 calls had to be delivered to other centres. It was fortunate on this occasion no tragedies resulted. But if a similar technical difficulty was to occur with fire, uh, lives would almost certainly be lost. Now, the FBU believe that the key motivation behind the creation of a single service was to protect and improve local services, and I'm quoting, despite financial cuts, by stopping duplication of support services like control rooms and not cutting frontline services. But these frontline services have been cut in a bid to balance the books. Frontline fire numbers have reduced by around 10 per cent over the last five years. And as the FBU states again, any further reductions of firefighters beyond this shall have an unacceptable impact on public and firefighter safety and the ability to deliver the key benefits of reform, improved frontline incomes, equitable access to specialist resources and improved engagement with local authorities. In June last year, President Officer, my Labour colleague Ian Murray, MP, delivered an amendment to the Scotland Bill to ensure a review of the controvers controversy surrounding VAT liability for the Fire Service and Police Scotland. Um, these uh, VAT liabilities arose in the Government's reorganisation of both services. Now, at the time, the Treasury explicitly advised the Scottish Government that their approach would mean the emergency service losing VAT refunds. But despite the warnings, the Government pressed ahead with reforms, costing Scotland's fire and police services millions. I'm on the last minute, but if the presiding officer allows, I will. Of course, in this circumstances. I'm very grateful to Mr Stewart for, for taking intervention at a late stage. I, I just want, want to, to, to ask Mr Stewart, does he not recognise that the Labour Party also supported the government in the reform of police and fire services? I, I do appreciate at the time there were issues around uh, the long-term business case uh, that members have made, but indeed the, the fact that the Labour Party supported the reforms and therefore... This is, Mr. Point, that point is not in dispute. The point is get the VAT right. And if I can just quote, uh, my colleague Rhoda Grant wrote to the Treasury and they said, in 2011, this is a Treasury official, the Scottish Government were explicitly advised of the potential consequence of changing from regional police forces to a single authority as part of the proposed revised funding model for Police Scotland. At the time they took the decision to make these reforms, they would have known they were no longer eligible for VAT refunds as a result. That was expected. That was expensive, presiding officer, ten million a year. In the last few seconds, in my conclusion, it's clear the job of Scottish Fire and Rescue Service is to, is to keep our communities safe and save lives. They need adequate resources to do this. We have a service of dedicated, skilled frontline staff. I include firefighters and, of course, control room staff as well. So I call on the Scottish Government to take immediate steps to protect the future frontline firefighters and the services support staff. Don't just take my word for it. YouGov Service showed 82 per cent of respondents thought that the Fire and Rescue Service were doing a fantastic job. Please support these heroes in our fire services and ask the government to look again at the model that they've currently carried out. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> now move to open debate. Four minute speeches. I call on Graham Pearson to be followed by Christian Alla. Thank you very much, President Officer. Uh, let me first begin by acknowledging that the current Minister was not in post at the time much of the arrangements uh, came into play. Uh, and to that extent, it might be helpful to share some of the experience of that time. Uh, there is no doubt that, that uh, from the outset, the Government knew that £10 million was to be paid in VAT. Uh, although, unfortunately, there was no business plan provided and ministers gave an assurance that that £10 million would be uh, recovered at some time in the future, I think we know prior to that date and our experience since that that prediction was without any basis in fact. And indeed, we are still no closer to having the VAT issue resolved today than we were a decade ago when this whole journey began. And irrespective of that £10 million, the key issue uh, that we deal with today is that we are aware of the pressures that exist on the fire service, and there is an unreasonable target set in terms of cuts, which ensure that not only do they need to pay the £10 million, but they need to find a way of replenishing savings 
from a, an ever smalling baseline within which to make savings. As a result, the economies of scale have evaporated. The slimming down of so-called support services has been completed. And we now have, as my colleague David Stewart alluded to, 400 fewer full-time firefighters now than existed in 2010. And indeed, within that number, there are 300 fewer since 2013. I'm happy to. Sure. I thank very much the member for taking the intervention. First of all, I think the member, uh, Mr Stewart, said 350 and, and not 400. I, I don't know if I've got it on that. But it's a regarding the VAT exempt. Who does he blame for what's happening now? Does he blame the SNP government or does he blame the Tory Conservative government? Can I say that I don't enjoy the notion of who to blame? It's who's responsible. And the person who's responsible in this, or the entity that's responsible here, is very firmly the Scottish Government. The Scottish Government has brought about a 20% cut in the budget for the Scottish Fire Service, when indeed the global budget would suggest a cut of nearer 10% would have been the kind of figure that was applied. And that's before anybody takes account of the priority that one achieves and attaching to the fire service and what they do for us. In addition, the fire service have taken on additional work. They have responsibility for responding to cardiac arrests. They have a greater involvement in the terrorist threat and the response to the terrorist threat. They are involved in training in relation to climate change. They also engage in the junior fire fighter schemes, which are so important to youth reoffending. And they are indeed involved in a great deal of fire inspections and enforcement. So rather than looking to blame someone, and we don't blame the current minister, I think we need some realism now from the entire Scottish establishment that says if we have emergency services, and these emergency services act on our behalf to save life, protect property and to provide a safer environment, we would ask, as David Stewart eloquently does in his motion, that the government should review the current situation, realise the impact they're having on frontline services, and instead of adhering to political one-liners, adopt that realistic approach and acknowledging we've gone too far and begin to support the fire service and the men and women who work in that service to ensure that they achieve what they want to do on our behalf, deliver a world-class service for Scotland and its communities. Thanks, Presiding Officer. Thank you. <clears throat> I now call on Christian Allard to be followed by Malcolm Chisholm. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I did not sign the motion, and uh, I'm not repenting. I don't consider myself a sinner uh, for several reasons. One first reason is, if uh, David Stewart said 350 uh, fewer firefighters, his motion says 300. And now we've got Graham Pearson who come up and he says it's 400. So we've got to be factual, first of all. What is it? There's one thing I know is that as a fire chief, when he came in front of the Justice Committee, he said that the 10 million pounds we are losing that Westminster are keeping uh, uh, the Treasury is, is, is keeping in London, that will fund 350 firefighters. That I know, the three, one second, if uh, the member has one second, it says 300 fewer, fewer firefighters on the motion, on the Labour motion of Mr. Stewart. The, uh, the, chief, the chief said we could have 300 firefighters. To my mind, the math is very easy. Is 50 firefighters extra it, it could fund. So we are a lot better than you think we are. Pearson. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, the figures that we're talking about here depends on the date that one measures the various establishments that we talk about in terms of the shortfall of firefighters. The key issue, would the member accept that it was always known in the business plan for what it was worth that £10 million would be paid in VAT because of the precedent that would be set if that rule was changed. Oh, now I'm going to come to, to, to David Stewart. Because he asks us, he tells us to repent, and we are sinners. And then he tells us that one of the reasons 
is a VAT. I'm sorry, I've got the motion in front of me. No way does it say the VAT. How come? Is the VAT issue not important enough? When, again, the fire chief was asked by the Justice Committee, when you ask, you know, how big was the issue of the VAT? They said it was massive. That's a word he, he used, massive. But it's so massive that Labour, Mr. Stewart, and the Labour MSP do not put it in the motion. Okay, fair enough, he did speak about it, but he knew at the time he wrote it, because we all knew this right from the start, that there were a possibility that the UK government, the conservative UK government, will withdraw some money from, our, from Police Scotland and from the fire services, fire and rescue services. We knew that it could happen. We asked, and we were very, very strong in asking, not only the Scottish Government, but this Parliament, not only this Parliament, but the Justice Committee, we asked, and we are asking again to make sure we get that money back. So I can't understand where is the question when we're talking about a detrimental effect and how come is the Scottish Government to respond? Let's talk about the numbers of firefighters. You know, there is a new model, a new model for Scotland today. That new model that uh, the fire, fight, the fire uh, uh, services and uh, rescue services have, we have uh, put a number to it, a number of whole-time firefighters. It's 3,709. As far as I know, we're still exceeding this. So again, I'll ask, you know, how come it's not in? And more importantly, in the VAT, what the two Labour members forgot to, to say is all the exemption that the Conservative, the Westminster Parliament are giving to other organisations. The firefighter service in Scotland, the fire and rescue service in Scotland, is the only one fire service in all of the UK who has to pay by VAT. It's ridiculous. The number of the other organisation are the BBC, the Metropolitan Police, and of course, there are the Olympic legacy organisation and the Transport Agency Highways England, and they both were granted VAT exemption after 2013. When Pat Winter Waters, the chair of SFRS board, wrote to the Prime Minister, the Chancellor of the Exeter, and every Scottish MP, the reply he got was that all this regulation and exempt organisation, but that SFRS is not one of the exception organisations. Why? No reason was given. And as I said, presenting officer, this is a massive issue. And if I, if I can finish on something, is to maybe what I would have said is to uh, say how much we've got, all the chamber will support our firefighters, particularly uh, after the flooding, uh, we have the people in Balata, the firefighters in Balata, will return an old time in Balata, in Inverurie, and across Avinishaya are doing a fantastic job. So we've got my thank you, President Officer. Thank you so much. <clears throat> now, Colin Malcolm Chisholm to be followed by Mary Scanlon. Can I first apologise to you and the Minister because I'm, I'm due at a meeting of the Cross Party Group on, on Violence Against Women at 5.30. But I did want to speak in this debate. I congratulate uh, Dave Stewart for introducing uh, the motion, which uh, raises, it gives us an opportunity to raise important issues on behalf of firefighters who, as we all know, put their lives on the line every day, not out of heroism, but through an absolute commitment to their profession and our communities. I would also like to uh, express uh, support and respect for the Fire Brigades Union, not only for the great work they do in this country, but for their ethos of international solidarity, as illustrated, uh, for example, by their ongoing work supporting the firefighters of Nablus. The least firefighters deserve is to feel that their service is supported, valued and prioritised. And I agree with Christian Allard that the VAT issue is important, but it cannot be used uh, as an excuse uh, for not addressing the problems uh, highlighted in the motion. Now, in the midst of the recent havoc caused by Storm Desmond, the FBU issued a call for cuts to services to be halted, and they said that a significant reduction in firefighter numbers would hamper fire and rescue uh, service responses to major events, as well as having an effect, obviously, on more routine uh, work. We've, we've dealt with the numbers, various people have, and as Graham Pearson says, it's 400 down since 2010, 300 since the Thinkel service set up, and the result of that has been, of course, uh, a, 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 an increasing reliance on overtime 
and uh, appliances uh, being taken out of service, as Dave Stewart reminded us. Matt, Matt Rack, FBU General Secretary, put it this way. The Scottish Government told us that shifting to the single fire and rescue service would protect frontline services, but since then we have seen further cuts in job losses. Firefighters are proud to serve our communities. They want to be out there serving, saving lives and making life safer for people. But cuts on this scale inevitably undermine what we are trying to do. So we have to address the problems. And, you know, we can have different views about who's to blame. That's not really the issue. The issue is the, uh, highlighting the problems uh, and, and the government taking responsibility for this area uh, where they are clearly um, the responsible uh, uh, government uh, involved in terms of action to address uh, the problems. Now, in a report to the Justice Committee, which I think has also been referred to by Dave Stewart, the FBU uh, go in, in more detail to some of the problems. And it's not just the, the numbers of firefighters that they emphasise. They talk, for example, about the control room closures with fewer staff dealing with more calls, uh, and uh, also the increasing increasing incidents response times, which leads them in that submission to call for national response uh, standards. Now, um, the increasing incident times are, are obviously mainly related to reductions in personnel, but there is also an issue about lack of appropriate equipment. And I was interested to read uh, a report uh, called Response and Resilience Review of Specialist Equipment. This was actually presented to the City of Edinburgh Council, a committee of the City of Edinburgh Council, in February uh, of last year. And it was interesting there to uh, see described some of the problems with the equipment, some of it below an acceptable standard, we were told, for a national fire and rescue service, and also an interesting point about inconsistencies in the type and standard of equipment across former uh, regional service areas. Now, of course, th there will be positive advantages from the single service in, in dealing with some of those inconsistencies, so no one's saying that that uh, in itself uh, was a bad move, although it clearly has had unfortunate consequences in terms uh, 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 that have been highlighted during uh, this debate. The other issue that comes out in that uh, report is the significant re training requirements. And again, if, uh, if, if personnel numbers are being squeezed, it's difficult to find the necessary time for that. So I think these are important issues that needed to be brought forward. And again, I congratulate Dave Stewart for doing that. It's the government's uh, responsibility to ensure firefighters are equipped, uh, resourced uh, and valued. And uh, I support uh, the motion that Dave Stewart uh, introduced and once again apologise for having to leave. But the, the Speaker at 5.30 is uh, the Minister's boss, the Cabinet Secretary for Justice, so I'm sure he will forgive me for going to, uh, to that meeting. Many thanks. Now call on Mary Scanlon to be followed by Leslie Brennan. Excuse me. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I can congratulate David Stewart for securing this debate. Uh, and I would say that I'm not going to argue over the figures. I wasn't entirely sure about the figures. But, Presiding Officer, I did support the motion in order to allow us to have a full discussion in this chamber, as there are clear issues with the single fire and rescue service. Uh, it used to be that water was the solution for a fireman. It now seems that water is the problem. And can I just say that we shouldn't talk about firefighters, because this is a fire and rescue service. And I commend each and every one, man and woman, who came to the rescue in Inverurie, Ballater and elsewhere in Scotland. So can I correct my colleagues and talk about fire and rescue? They're not just there to put out fires. Can I say to Christian Allard, who's at fault? Graham Pearson was right to knock that one down. Can I perhaps suggest... No, I'm not taking an intervention. Can I maybe suggest that Christian Allard read the Audit Scotland report? He would see the figures in the Audit Scotland, which have, in fact, been acknowledged by his own government, and then he wouldn't need to argue. But very quickly... Mr. Dick, I just wanted to ask, uh, uh, the member said she signed the motion of Mr Stewart. Had the VAT had been on the motion, would she have signed? VAT was well known before the police uh, merged and it was well known before the fire and rescue service merged. I gave you my explanation about the number of firefighters that you were arguing about uh, and uh, I've got no more to say. But I do think it's appropriate to have this issue addressed today. Uh, can I just say, in my role in the Audit Committee, we have looked at the Fire and Rescue Service and at the same time trying to make, they are trying to make substantial savings. The key message in May last year from Audit Scotland was that the Fire and Rescue Service did not have a long-term financial strategy. 
This is urgently required, and there is a potential funding gap of £42.7 million. <laughs> so forget the VAT, let's look at the, the realistic state we're in. And given that last year staff costs amounted to 79% of the budgeted gross expenditure, it is understandable that the Fire Brigade Union, staff, Fire and Rescue Service are concerned that the service has to consider more serious frontline cuts in order to address this significant funding gap. There is a 31% real terms fall in the budget from 2012 to 2020. So who is responsible for that? I think you should know, Mr Allard. And the net savings expected up to 2027 is £328 million. It is all in the Audit Scotland report. But when the Chair and the Chief Officer of the Fire and Rescue Service came to the audit, I spoke about retained firefighters. And David Stewart will understand that in the Highlands, we have a higher number of retained and voluntary firefighters than anywhere else in Scotland. Vacancies of more than 30 per cent and of the three uh, uh, around Inverness uh, uh, were highlighted at the time. The retained firefighters' wages and conditions of service was set up in the 1950s, and Pat Waters and Alistair Hay promised that they would review this service given that people have to give a commitment of 90 hours to 120 and they would come back to the audit committee by November and we're still waiting but I see the minister saying it's been done. I certainly haven't heard about it and it was me that asked about it. Uh, so this is an opportunity uh, to look forward for the fire service. But now that I've criticised them, I'd like to commend them on the initiatives taken with the Highlands and Islands airports uh, to look at um, staff firefighters uh, at the airport qualified to work as retained duty firefighters and also another success in Loch Inver where the station had significant problems in maintaining crew numbers and after an extension, extensive local consultation 12 potential new entrants came forward. It would take too long to look at all the vacancies throughout the Highlands, um, but if this exercise can be done in Loch Inver, it can also be done in places like Betty Hill, Bonner Bridge, Bucky, Canach, uh, Forest, Grantown, and many, many others that all have between five and ten vacancies. Uh, and I think that's actually becoming a serious, serious level. So, presiding officer, as we approach the third anniversary of the single Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, I want to put on the record my absolute respect and admiration for every person at the front line and every member of staff. Uh, and I think they have to be commended for the wonderful fabulous work that they did recently uh, in a very sensitive manner, if I may say, throughout areas of Scotland affected by flooding. Thank you. Thanks very much. I now call on Leslie Brennan, after which we move to closing speech from the Minister. Four minutes or thereby, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I just wanted to make a couple of points. Uh, it was really good that Dave was able to secure this debate today. I think, obviously, the huge budget cuts facing the Fire Brigade and at the same time, the increasing demand, the demographic demand with older people, and we've seen that with successful campaigns such as the Sloppy Slippers campaign, where older people swap their old slippers for their new slippers to try to minimise falls and flooding. But also at one of the local community planning partnerships that I attended in Dundee, the Fire and Rescue Service representative there had mentioned also increasing demand due to welfare reform. So you've got three different aspects that are increasing demand, but at the same time they're facing shrinking budgets. And I was just going to echo what uh, Mary Scanlon had said about the Audit Scotland report, that actually, which was published last year, and it reveals a £43 million cut. 80% of their uh, revenue budget is on staff. Okay. I thank very much the member for taking a division. First of all, I would congratulate her to have two debates at the same time as the maiden speech this afternoon, now in a debate. No, just a question. She's congratulating uh, uh, Mary Scanlon. And I, I'm a bit confused. It seems to be there is an alliance between the Conservative and Labour on that particular motion. Does she think a bit strange that the VAT was not put in the motion? Is it to get the backing of the Conservative? 
I think it's actually Brennan. to do with I was I was iterating, reiterating what Mary Stalin had said about the Audit Scotland report. So I'm not even discussing about the VAT. I think the forty three million pounds is the main issue. It's the Scottish Government that are responsible for the forty three million pound cut. The FBU have estimated that they've seen a reduction in 449 fire and rescue uh, service people, which is a 6% cut. So when we're looking at increasing demand, the concern is when they're actually going to be more stretched, that actually prevention then goes down on the list. So that's what I wanted to, to raise. My concern that the budgets are shrinking, but there's a, they're facing increasing demand. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you very much. Well done. So I now call on Minister Paul Wheelhouse to wind up the debate. Minister, seven minutes or thereby. As Thank you, you Presiding need. Officer. And may I begin by saying I, I wholeheartedly agree uh, with the praise for the, the men and women of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service that we have heard in this afternoon's speeches from all members. And, and I know there will be differences of opinion that I'll probably cover in the rest of the debate, but I'd certainly welcome the the strong and heartfelt support across the Chamber for the very hard-working and very brave uh, men and women of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. Um, members will be aware uh, that uh, reform of Scotland's Fire and Rescue Services was proposed uh, by this Government and, and Parliament agreed the Police and Fire Reform Scotland Bill back in June 2012, a position that was supported by the Labour Party. I don't make that, to, that point to, to cause rancour in the Chamber, but I, I think it is important in the context of the VAT issue. I think we all knew in the chamber that VAT would be an issue, and yet uh, other parties, not necessarily all parties, supported the, supported the bill. So I just made that as a factual point. One of the aims of fire reform was, of course, to protect and improve local services. Uh, I will briefly, if you, if you may. Ms. Scanlon. The, the, the VAT was an issue long before the Scottish Government uh, proposed the merger of the police service and the fire and rescue service. So that should have been sorted out and accommodated for prior, rather than complaining about it three years later. Minister. <laughs> Indeed, I, I was making a slightly different point uh, in, in truth. It was just to say that collectively we were all aware of this issue. So it's not a su surprise I accept that, but equally parties did support the bill knowing that VAT would be an issue. And to be fair, we, I think all parties were aware we were contesting that issue throughout. And uh, that's not to, to criticise uh, Ms Scanlon, but it's just to say that it's the nature of the, the debate. But one of the key aims, of course, of fire reform was to protect and improve local services, despite financial cuts that we faced as a government. And I, I do, for, again, for the record, point out that uh, while blame has been apportioned around the chamber, we would not perhaps be in the situation we are, but for the, 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 the public squeeze, funding squeeze that we all face uh, at this moment in time, which necessitated difficult choices being made. Uh, but by, you know, we wanted to stop duplication and improve frontline outcomes. I will, presiding officer. Pearson. Uh, the, the point that uh, we make during this debate is that the fire service has taken a disproportionate a amount of cuts in their particular service. Had it been cuts across the board of a similar level, they wouldn't have faced the cutbacks that they currently face. Minister. I, I, I understand the point the member is making, but we, we have a period of a, over 10 years there's been a continued reduction in the number of firefighters in the Scottish Fire and Rescue Services and the legacy services, so there has been a, a long-running issue. Uh, but one of the objectives of reform was, of course, to try and remove duplication and to try and uh, take out uh, you know, costs where they could be taken out and try and protect frontline uh, firefighters' jobs, uh, indeed. I would just w want to say in connection to that, uh, and I don't want to get into semantics, but just to say the commitment was given to protecting frontline services, uh, not frontline jobs, but clearly all of us had in mind trying to protect frontline jobs as best we could uh, in the reforms. Three years, of course, have passed, and after the creation of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, the Scottish Government continues its commitment to the aims of reform, but despite the UK Government's continued approach to, to austerity, the Scottish Government has protected the SFRS revenue uh, budget in cash terms as part of uh, the forthcoming 2016-17 budget, should that be approved by Parliament, of course. And this is an outcome that the service's Chief Officer, Alistair Hay, described as being manageable and uh, not necessarily desirable, and I accept that, but manageable, and one that will enable SFRS to continue to play a vital role in protecting our communities. The Scottish Government, for its part, has consistently argued for an alternative to uh, UK Government's austerity measures, and I would like to repeat the assurance that we remain committed 
to investing in Scotland's infrastructure and public services. I'd also, uh, if I could make some progress, I'll bring the member back in. Um, I would also remind the, the Chamber that SFRS is the only, as Christian Lard said, the only fire service in the United Kingdom that is unable to recover VAT. I know we've covered that extensively in the debate, uh, but it is liable for an annual cost currently slightly in excess of £10 million per annum. And HM Treasury has rejected our repeated request for the SFRS to be able to recover VAT. Indeed, the Deputy First Minister raised this issue with the Chief Secretary again a little over a week ago. And this places unnecessary additional financial pressure on the service at a time when our financial resources are already stretched. I would just say in aggregate, over the period that Audit Scotland looked at the, the funding gap, as they put it, of £43 million that uh, Leslie Brennan uh, referred to, and I congratulate her on her speech. I'm not sure if it's the maiden speech or not, but welcome to the, the Chamber, uh, Leslie Brennan, and uh, I look forward to uh, debating with you over the months ahead. But the, um, the, the uh, financial resources are stretched, and if you take that £10.3 million over a number of years, it's, it's a substantial was a substantial way to plugging the £43 million gap. I will bring in Mary Scanlon if she wishes to. Ms Scanlon. Yes, I was just going to say the £43 million uh, gap, according to Audit Scotland, there are no protected areas. So you are not even protecting the frontline services, according to Audit Scotland, which has been confirmed by ministers. And can you now tell us if the long-term financial strategy that the Auditor General said was urgently needed last May, is that now in place? House. The long-term financial strategy is under development by the Fire and Rescue Service. It is a matter for the Fire and Rescue Service. Uh, they are responding positively to the Audit Scotland report. It is worth bearing in mind, uh, from a sedentary position, just to remind Mary Scanlon that, the, uh, the, the, as I say, the uh, SFRS have delivered the savings expected and they continue to respond very effectively uh, to everything that is asked of them. And the Chief Officer, as I say, described the 2016-17 budget as a manageable settlement. But I would just reiterate the point that uh, the Fire and Rescue Service are delivering the long-term financial strategy that's asked of them, and uh, they will see that in the course of the forthcoming year, alongside a revised uh, framework for the Fire and Rescue Services. And yet, despite all the, the, the pressures, the creation of a single Scottish Fire and Rescue Service has been a success. I think we're losing sight of that here today. There has never been a single occasion since the inception of the service that I am aware of where it has not responded with the required resources to an incident, and that will continue. We need only look at the very recent extreme weather events, as members have indicated, to, to find examples of where the SFRS has been able to strategically position and mobilise its resources across the entire country, according to rapidly changing risk and demand, without wrangling over whose resources are used and how this money is recovered between different legacy areas. And that's extremely important. The service was able to pre-deploy water rescue teams from Inverness, Elgin, Perth, Dundee, Stirling and Motherwell to where they were most needed in the north. Uh, and in communities such as Ballater that um, uh, Christian Allard referred to, and assisted with hundreds of evacuations and rescues. And I very much welcome the warm comments that members have, have said uh, today. But I am, of course, grateful for the deployment in my own region, in the south of Scotland, in, in Dumfries and Galloway, and the borders as well. And I saw a witness for myself, indeed, crews from Edinburgh, and, and I believe West Lothian, who came down to help out in Hoyk and, and other communities in the borders. The speed and efficiency of the service's response under the most challenging of conditions is an excellent demonstration of how the single service has delivered real and meaningful benefits to communities across Scotland. And indeed, the uh, newly refurbished uh, control room at Toll Cross worked highly effectively both during Storm Desmond and, and Storm Frank. So I think we can uh, be confident that the, the team there is, is highly experienced. And just to reiterate that uh, teams have been redeployed. There's been no compulsory redundancies in the control room closures uh, to date. And, and staff from Fife have been redeployed down into the control room in Toll Cross to bring that frontline experience that members refer to into, uh, into, into being in the new control room arrangements. This is also a testament, of course, to SFS, uh, SFRS's hard work to protect and indeed enhance its own frontline resources in the face of financial pressure. It has invested significantly in new equipment across the country, including state-of-the-art appliances, and rural communities in Fife, the Highlands and Dumfries and Galloway have all benefited significantly from this. I do recognise the point Mary Scanlon made about the retained duty system. It's clearly an area that we both share an interest in. We've discussed previously uh, the review is ongoing uh, under the Fire and Rescue Service. I hope that it will conclude uh, after the uh, parliamentary election, but it will conclude in, in the near future and, and give us some clear messages about um, the future shape of RDS, and we will respond as possible positively as we can to those recommendations. But the, uh, the work of the retained duty system is also enhanced if we can work collectively to try and persuade employers uh, to make, uh, make their staff available for retained duty positions, because quite often the, the funding is in place, but it's difficult to obtain recruits to fill the vacancies. And I think that's a key issue that we all uh, can look to try and address. 
Uh, the Fire, and Re Fire and Rescue Service and the Fire Brigade Union have agreed an operating model, as has been referred to by members. Christian Lard is quite right. The figure I understand in November was 3,748 firefighters, so it's slightly above the, uh, the model, uh, model figure. But not only does the service currently have more than that uh, figure, it has also undertaken targeted recruitment campaigns and agreed an interim mobility policy with the Fire Brigade Union, which allows firefighters to be moved to locations should it be required, and particularly targeting recruitment problems in, in, in the north, in Aberdeen, and to try and fill gaps there in the process. Presiding officer, the benefits of reform are apparent. Last May, a report from Audit Scotland confirmed a number of things. The fire and reform process has been effectively managed. The SFRS has maintained effective local engagement with the communities during the reform process, that the creation of SFRS has had no impact on the public and that its performance is improving. Furthermore, it would be difficult to argue that the creation of a single uh, service has resulted in a reduction to frontline services when SFRS firefighters are currently involved in a national trial which aims to increase survival rates of patients who suffer out of hospital uh, cardiac arrest. There is just one of several ways in which the Fire and Rescue Service is evolving. I welcome members' comments on that evolving role that the, the service is playing. Uh, and I think the, uh, our, our colleagues in the Fire and Rescue Service deserve our fulsome praise. I do accept there are political differences we have today, but I do welcome the united front we are showing in raising uh, our firefighters. Uh, I will just finish, if I may, Presiding Officer, I'm conscious of time, with a quote from uh, the Chief Inspector, of, a recently retired Chief Inspector of Her Majesty's Fire Service Inspector, who at the Justice Committee in April last year said, and I quote, if eight fire and rescue services and a college had been trying to find nearly £50 million of savings, uh, what would the situation have been? Unquote. He ended by saying that, in his judgment, is, and I quote, we would have been in a far worse position than we are in. The Scottish Fire and Rescue Service has done a pretty remarkable job of bringing in the reform, maintaining business as usual and making progress. And for that, I thank them. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Thank you very much. And thank you all for taking part in this surprisingly inflammatory debate. Um, I now close this meeting of Parliament.